Hi everyone, thanks very much for uh, tuning into this week's edition of the Recruitment Reality Podcast. I'm joined by uh, one of our, I guess a partner and somebody mm-hmm. from within my network, Robert from Arctic Shores, um, who, great business, I absolutely love what you guys do, um, and I guess we're in a very similar space as well in terms of, sort of pre-screening candidates, especially at, at high volume. Um, but rather than me give a dis- justice to your introduction, it'd be great if you could give a quick overview to the audience, I guess. Sure, Woody. Thank you very much for inviting me. So I'm Robert Neary, CEO and co-founder of Arctic Shores, and we are the next generation of psychometric assessment. And what we mean by the next generation of psychometric assessment is that we understand about people's personality or soft skills, as some people might refer to them, through the way that they do things, by understanding from the way that they interact with tasks what motivates them, rather than through asking how they might perform through a series of questions. And we've been going since 2014, now have... 65 employees and work with 120 clients in 40 different countries and have assessed 3 million candidates. Wow. That's a that's a claim. I thought we were doing well doing 33,000 a month, but 3 million is pretty impressive. Um, and I guess, uh, you know, we touched upon it right at the beginning, but we have this shared passion that essentially CVs are are rubbish and should be killed and and got rid of. Where did your, for context I guess, where did your passion to get rid of the CV actually come from? Yeah, it all started with a friend ringing me up and saying that his daughter had applied for five different graduate roles and uh, had been uh, screened out on all five of them immediately. And that, in her particular case, had started with um, an aptitude intelligence test that had been around for 30 years. And it got me thinking about, well, how do we understand what somebody is capable of? And it very quickly became apparent that for most organisations, they start with a piece of information that is manipulated in many cases <laughs> and at best is a reference point of something that m- might have happened in the past and might have uh, been useful but really doesn't tell you much about that person certainly isn't predictive of whether they will be mm. successful in a particular role and I suppose I've always liked to be counterintuitive and challenge things a bit and it got me thinking about you know why is it that we're so uh, wedded to Mm. this document the cv when actually you ask a lot of people about it uh, and we did a survey last year on this 35 only 35 percent of people believe that it holds anything that is remotely useful wow. so 65% think it is, thinks it's yeah. a complete waste of time as a document and yet that very same cohort of people we asked 98% of them use the CV yeah, as part the of their recruitment process screening. <laughs> tool which is crazy and yeah. like uh, there was another stat that you know 60% of all stats are made up but yeah. there's another stat I saw on LinkedIn that was 40% of every CV is totally made up anyway so yes. it's and, and I can 100% believe that because people feel the need to uh, show their best selves when in reality, you know, maybe that person doesn't exist. But if you're using a CV parser or any type of sort of CV based AI, if you don't have that, then you're not getting through anyway. But, but yes. you know, and on top of that, there's now people that write CVs for other people with a specific goal of getting through an AI you know, test basically or, or screening process from a... Well, just on that CV. point, Woody, that, that, and I think that's a big threat now for, for anybody that uses the CV uh, in their recruitment process. It, you know, if, if it wasn't a stupid thing to be doing in the past, it's, an, it's a mad thing to be yeah. doing now because ChatGPT... They write it for you. Yes, 
And this was a funny thing that I saw on LinkedIn the other yeah. day. Um, a, a recruiting company had ended up selecting the application that had been written by ChatGPT by them to just test out uh, what type How of good... good yes, exactly. Yeah, and so they hadn't realised because they'd done it as a sort of blind set of application forms. So it just shows you yeah. that uh, there's, there's... They're even fooling themselves. Exactly. Yeah, wow. That's. I mean, it is crazy. And, and I think there's a lot of... A lot of different things that you can do, but what, like, fundamentally, why do you think it is that people haven't killed the CV? Like, why are the, why are these people resting on their laurels, so comfortable with having that as the first screening process? You know, that they spend seven and a half seconds reviewing and then deciding if somebody's got great potential. Yes. So I think there are two reasons for it. One is it's ingrained in our psyche. It is what we have all being brought up about is what everybody believes the first thing wherever you look when you apply for your first job you apply for e even in university everybody says what's on your cv you've got to when you're at school um you've got to do some work experience in the holidays to improve your cv so, yeah. it's mentioned everywhere cv 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 so it's stuck in our our brains as this is our document that says what we're capable of. Yeah. So I and think what that, your value is. And what your value which is. Which is a horrible thing to think, is. really, isn't it? It is. A piece of paper holding your entire value as an individual. Um, so why why your business then? What, what, why not something else to replace the CV? And I think th this, this is the, the kind of the second point a bit around this, is why, why are we still clinging to it? Yeah. Um, and it's because we don't know if there's anything better out there. Yeah. And, and, and some, uh, psychometrics, I think, is quite an interesting one because people uh, look at psychometrics a little bit like Marmite. You know, it's either one thing that you love or you hate. Yeah. And you talk to people and they say, oh, I, you know, I love psychometrics because I've, I've learned something about myself. It's fantastic. And others go, it was rubbish. Um, I didn't believe it, yeah. and and so I think it's you know all a bunch of voodoo science. Yeah, or I didn't want to believe it. <laughs> well, and that's that exactly that that's what's what's interesting yeah. about this. That too. was spookily accurate, but yes, but I given it was, yes. I don't want you to know that it was. Yeah, yes, <laughs> that's right. And I think this is what the interesting thing is about uh, when you move into the world of psychometrics and a, a science of comparing your personality, which is your sense of your own yeah. person and, and who you are and self-belief and then suddenly you're compared to others and you're compared to others that are outside of your own carefully selected little bubble mm. and group of people who you feel comfortable with because you say oh yes well I'm you know I'm, I'm more confident than maybe Woody is or I'm, yeah. I'm uh, more creative or whatever it might be and you can feel happy in your own little space on that yeah. and then you do a psychometric that says well actually compared to the general population you're not especially confident or creative yeah. and, and somehow rather than seeing that as a sense of oh okay you know wake like up time it, maybe. exactly <laughs> it is uh, well clearly the psychometric is rubbish because I know what I feel yeah. about myself and I think it's interesting, isn't it? Because it, it, from a psychometric perspective, and I, and I always think about how difficult it is to kill the CV because it's so ubiquitous, number one. But number two, it's this, you can use the same one for every application, yes. basically. But then I think inherently, from a candidate's perspective, they're in control of what lies they put in a CV. Yes. Whereas you're not in control of what lies you put into... A psychometric, you know, yes. you put the data in and the data comes out and it's scientifically proven. Yes. How do you get that kind of balance between like <laughs> creativity when applying for a job versus, you know, accuracy? Yes. Like, do you think there's a, a, a thing that we need to kind of combat there and actually help people find the right jobs? Yes. As opposed to people applying for the jobs they think they would be good at or, yes. or want? So it's a great question, and, and, and actually when you ask people a, 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 about what they, they expect from a recruitment process, they want two things really. One is, I want it to be fair, and secondly, I want to get in front of a human as quickly as possible, yeah. so I can have that interaction. Yeah. Now if we just come back to the first point around that, about fairness, and the, the challenge, and we've seen it with university entrants now, they're, they're, they're dropping the personal statement or they're changing it. 
because it, it was meant to provide a piece of information to, to enable somebody to show what they are like as an individual. Mm. The problem with all of that is A, you get a little bit of people who manipulate it, which is not great, but then you also get a lot of people who don't know what a good CV looks like. Mm. Maybe not even given the opportunity to have done some things yeah. that people with a higher socioeconomic status, yeah. private school background, Absolutely. may have had that opportunity. So it's completely unfair. Yeah, it's, in, it's inconsistent. Exactly. Yeah. From that point of view, that you can manipulate it if you're a manipulative type person, but also you can get advantage just by having money. Yeah, absolutely. And that's completely wrong. Yeah. And I think that that actually is 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 really now as we moved to. You look at the DEI requirements now for people around that, uh, for, for organisations, and that for me the the really interesting people is that part of that they're starting to focus a bit more on social mobility. Yeah, and that rather than trying to go through the list of, um, you know, being fair for different ethnicities, um, trying to do it for um, you know different groups in society, they're actually saying look. We, we just want to make it a level playing field for, for everybody. You shouldn't yeah. have an advantage but just because you've got a bit of money yeah. or, or you've not been given access to money. Yeah. It's a really interesting... I mean, look, I, so I'm privately school educated. I remember my personal statement and I remember writing very little of it myself because there was so much help from my teachers. Yes. You know, they were like, this is, this is how you should do it. And lo and behold, I got six offers... Yes. At universities with, you know, I got like ABC or whatever, which are not bad grades. But again, let's not talk about the fact that I went to a private school and there was like barely any pupils in my year. So a lot of help. And then you compare that to a school where somebody's got 30 kids in a classroom. Yeah. And, you know, that teacher is trying to help with personal statements for each of those 30 kids. It's like impossible to yeah. give the same level yeah. of diligence. Yeah. So I totally agree on the on the fairness side of things. Do you think, however, there is also a a barrier to like uh, uh, universities? I know some universities they will be they will enable people to do loads of practice yes. for things like psychometrics, for things like video interviews. Like, how do you overcome that? Like, to get actual social mobility. If somebody hasn't been to university but they've got amazing potential and they yes. haven't had to the you know been afforded the practice etc like how do we even break that it's so difficult to... no exactly Woody and that has been I think one of the the big challenges and certainly one of the things that I'm sure set out to go and resolve mm. which is how can you come up with a way of understanding somebody that means that you uncover potential rather than enabling somebody to, through practice, to enhance where they're at. Yeah. And that, 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 that's where the challenge most people think about psychometrics, either as some probably quite old, poor yeah. personality test Verb they based did, or whatever it MBTI, is. Myers-Briggs that yeah. they, they thought, or it's a test, which is numerical verbal reasoning test, yeah. which you can practice Absolutely. and you will get advantage yeah. in and it doesn't uncover potential yeah. at all and the thing for me and I think that's that's why people are desperate now to find an alternative to the CV but they're then asking the question mm. okay well, what can I do that is fairer uh, mm. around that and I think that's where whether it be um, asking people to do things first of all that you can't practice that there is and that's the whole um, mm. Uh, framework and design behind the Arctic Shores assessment it doesn't matter how many times you do it or practice it we are going to get what your innate decisions are around this mm. and and then you need to um, overlay that with something where they can see and give an opportunity to speak about what they are which is you know why our two companies partner so well together and it has to be that sort of combination uh, of those things that give people a bit more of a holistic view of what that person's about and what yeah. they're capable of. But a consistent one as well. Yes. That's the thing is uh, everybody's doing the same thing. Yes. Everybody's answering the same questions. Yes. You know, in, in our world, I think, you know, the, the, the CV stuff is just crazy. But in our world, you would, we would usually replace the kind of inconsistent telephone interview, actually, because... 
if somebody look again if somebody looks at a cv and i love the idea of somebody looking at a psychometric and because i think psychometrics are great i tend to use them as a guide and then a tool for questioning a candidate yes so i'd love to think that people would get get psychometrics fully understand them yes. and then give a good telephone interview but i'm not sure how realistic that is um, so I'd love to know like what you do from an onboarding perspective. But the bit we're trying to get consistent is if you read somebody's CV and it says they went to Loughborough University, they went to school in Derby, you know, and they play hockey. If I read that, I'm immediately going, oh, I went to Loughborough Uni as well and played yeah. hockey. Yeah. You know, and it's a totally different experience yes. to the, you know, person that I just can't relate to because I've not lived in anywhere near their circumstance. Yeah. And sorry, just on that point about that, so I think that consistency is really interesting. And the challenge that we will have in recruitment and talent acquisition is that you've, to get this right, if you really are going to scrap the CV and you really are going to focus on potential, then you have to go all in. You can't can't do this by half, no half measures. Break, is it? There's no, oh, I, I'll get into the psychometrics and then I'll just check. Make sure the their CV, CV is needs. good. <laughs> exactly. And that's what happens. Yeah. Or I get them to do psychometrics and then I want them to have a 2 1 degree from a red brick university. Yeah, absolutely. No, you've got to go in and you've got to go completely. And it's yeah. not just blind CV. I mean, blind CV is, seems a stupid thing to me because you just push the bias lower down in the CV yeah and, I, and I, I, there's, there's a really interesting thing that Maya Vitae did there's, that's based on other research on this 150 plus different cognitive biases that we when we look at a CV Absolutely. come into play yeah and and, and you're not aware of you're aware, aware of, of maybe three of them exactly because which is name school last employer right. so, so and there's a hundred you know and there's, there's always other ones there's all, oh others. there's language in there yeah. there's things that you're familiar with there's references in there there's, um, there's tone of voice there's so many different things yeah. that you what we did you last look at what time of the day That's is it yeah. and all of these things uh, means that we're not doing it fairly so get that consistency actually means that we have to put potential right at the beginning and so my big thing at the moment is you can scrap the CV what do you do well the one thing that you, you must do is change the job description yeah. to making it personality and soft skill focused yeah. around potential because it's what I call the experience trap unless we we take come out of that mindset that CV experience what school you went to what university you went to what unless we actually throw that all to one side and focus on okay what I need is somebody who's creative what I need is somebody who's determined what I need is somebody who can problem solve fantastic put that at the forefront then of your recruitment process and then have everything consistent around that application questions psychometric screening on there video assessment in there all of these things should be building a layer on understanding that person's potential and then when you get to the interview then by all means ask them um, you know tell me about a time where you showed some creativity yeah, yeah. that's okay and you can you can then if somebody wants to bring in what they did at a particular organization name dropping yeah, that, that's them, okay but, it's it's where in the funnel you're being you know, at some point you have to be biased, you know, you, well, you to what to, you know works well in yes, your business. Yes. Not yes. biased towards a specific group of people, yes. but biased towards what's going to work well in your business. Yes. Uh, and what you've got to constantly challenge is that bias, yes. basically, like of what good looks like for yes. your company. Um, but it's, it's the whole, you know, if you're chopping off somebody's legs at the front end of your funnel, then what's the point in even getting their application in the first place? That's right. You're just wasting money. That's right. So I totally, That's right. Um, I totally agree with that. You obviously talked about companies that need to go, companies basically need to go all in on this. What kind of companies are you actually seeing going all in and really going, right, CVs are kind of, they're gone for us. Like, this is the path that we're going down. You don't have to name names, but is, is there any like particular industries? Or? So there's, there's a couple really, so there's, Three uh, companies I've been talking to recently around this. It started actually with a conversation with a guy called Nick Gallimore of Advanced Software. And Advanced had been bought by a private equity house in the US. Yeah. And the, I know Advanced fairly well. I mean, oh, they, they used psychometrics 
old fashioned yes for many many years as their if you don't hit this you're not getting in kind of yes level. and it was very much an aptitude test it was yeah and but he just said we're going to scrap the cv Amazing. and all of this and put this on our career site and just said no prior experience no cvs required uh, on this at all this is what the process looks like it's all about uh, hiring for uh, potential and, and you know your attitude to the job yeah. uh, rather than any past experience and so with and it's always something that I believed on but I, what I hadn't really appreciated was was the whole process and what you needed to do to get by and around this and so on the back of the conversation with him I then had a conversation with Siemens Electrification in, in Manchester yeah. and then a CEO had come in there lovely guy called John Turner who just said I want Siemens is all about transformation now and this is interesting in terms of the companies mm. on this mm. of we've got to go to sort of being a manufacturing engineering boring German uh, type of engineering company we need to be an internet of things mm. uh, type of business and so we're going to need to recruit different types yeah. of people with different skills into yeah. but we can't attract people with digital skills so what I'm going to do and he, he was telling me he had this role for a, um, a project manager that had been open for 200 days and had 12 applications wow. just hadn't been able to fill it and the uh, for the a juggernaut business yeah like and, the, and the TA team just said oh it's too specialist uh, because you want it to be a project manager with specific yeah. you know railway engineering expertise and he just said look I've, I've, I've got to find a new answer to it and I said okay well look I've got this idea about how you can hire for potential yeah. through a CV-less process will you uh, run with me exactly <laughs> what you need to do yeah. and then tell me how you get on. So he said, perfect, I'll do it. And this was January this year and he called me up last Thursday and said, look, I just need to have a, a quick call with you. And I thought, oh no, it's going to be a bit of a disaster. And he said, I just want to tell you in person that this has been absolutely fantastic. We've had over 500 applications. Just interviewed the final eight that we selected you know, through your process. My hiring manager said we could hire all eight of them. Wow. All eight were so good yeah. and we did not look at a CV yeah. through them. One of them was an internal applicant who would never have applied for the job but for the fact that we said you don't need You're to open. have a CV yeah. for it. Yeah. We didn't realise how good he was. The other is an assistant manager at Kentucky Fried Chicken yeah. who's immensely capable but it would never have been exposed. Yeah. If you know, because the role that they were doing is not the role that they're capable of. Yeah. And well, they know if they're putting a CV in that says Kentucky Fried Chicken. Exactly. They're non-starter for an engineering the company. Just go and see yeah. you later. Yeah. And so they had, you know, throughout the process, really good uh, gender mix in there. Met in terms of all the other um, diversity groups were in there by 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 doing this process. And he just said, it feels like you've lifted a hood from my eyes and I've realised what this incredible talent Siemens now realises what this mm. incredible talent pool actually is out there yeah so to finish the story on what type of companies are doing it it's not necessarily the companies that you think that mm. we do it's not the tech companies yeah that are doing this uh, they're paying for recruiters to go out and target hunt. and hunt yeah. exactly from other rather than how do we actually expand the yeah. pool on this and it's, it's organisations like Siemens, Tyler, some of the, the manufacturers that, that I can't compete with the Googles and the Microsofts. Yeah, so we've got to do something different. So we've got to do something yeah. different. We don't do free fruit bowls. So. <laughs> <laughs> Although, exactly, we've got no uh, fo be... <laughs> football, table football in the... Uh, exactly. There'll be, a real, there'll be a real lack of um, fruit bowls in some of those companies, I think, now. Not many day in the life of TikToks going out from those companies right now which is uh, which is interesting in itself and I think actually you know the flood of people from that I just my, my concern I don't know if it's a, your a similar concern of yours but DEI has got on the agenda yes. rightly so and properly and my fear is that as this year goes on maybe the availability of talent increases and companies actually go backwards because they go, right, we've, we've been inundated now with applications. I just need to get through these CVs. I just need to do whatever. 
do you have the same fear? And if you do, like, what advice are you, or what education are you giving to the market to try and stop them from going down that, mm. that route of like basically complacency? I'm not sure it's complacent. It's probably like I'm, you know, half my team has gone in from TA, and now I just need to get the job done because yes. otherwise I'm gone too or whatever. Yes. So it's a bit of panic, a bit of complacency in some some places. So. Those are the two questions in a roundabout way. Like, yeah, are you yeah. are you yeah. afraid of that and seeing it? And so, so I, am, you... I was a bit, and then I spoke to a managing director of uh, Tripad, the um, the ATS yeah. uh, provider, and or one of the co-founders, and he was saying he's seen and they do a lot of volume um, uh, assessment or uh, clients who do volume uh, hiring. And, they, and he said, on average, it's gone from 80 applications per role to over 300 now. Yeah. So you can't, if you're TA, you've seen your budget be uh, at best reduced. held, but yeah. mostly reduced. And you want to go from looking at maybe 10, 15 CVs to 100. No chance. You're just yeah. not going to get any sleep. So they're going to have to use tech in some form mm. to be able to do more with less mm. so I think that's the first thing I think the other thing and uh, that I, I challenge people to, 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 to go and do is go to, to get over this complacency piece go and look at your job description and that then feeds your job advert out there yeah. and and really think about is this telling the right story yeah. of what we want to hire and the type of person that we're looking for yeah because actually you can do if you get that job description right that feeds the job advert and then that feeds you know what you're then going to make your selection criteria and actually I and this is the, a lot of companies don't they to actually go on the career website and actually look at saying well what are we actually asking for they don't realize how how bad it is, bad it is and how yeah. rubbish it looks yeah yeah I and I've definitely been guilty of that as a hiring manager and that's complacency as well because you just get the old one out. Yes. Put it on. Yeah. You know, you might have all of this wonderful DEI stuff that you're thinking about in terms of screening, but, you know, it might be, uh, it might have too many bullet points and typically females apply, apply less for jobs that have too many requirements. Exactly. So they're less likely to apply for things that they don't tick all the boxes for. Yes. There's all sorts of stuff, lots of research that you can look into around that. Um, I guess my my fear is that you will get some ruthless recruiters that I remember when I first started out in recruitment and I was speaking to a client and they said, uh, well, what I used to do is I used to get the CVs, paper CVs at this point, uh, that's quite a long time ago, and I would take half of them mm -hmm. and throw them in the bin Yes, because you don't want an unlucky salesperson yeah. and they're just unlucky and I was like... Oh, it makes perfect sense. Yes. Perfect sense. I think I agree with the point that actually they're either going to have to do that, you know, they're either going to have to be shocking then. have yeah. a horrible moment where they just go, I'm only going to call 25% of these people, I'm just going to ignore the rest, I've got enough. Or they are going to have to enable some automation. And I think the thing that we have to educate people on, like the Siemens of the world who are clearly embracing it, is like you say, they need to diversify their business. And the only way you're gonna diversify your business is to diversify your people yes. and the ideas and innovation that's coming into exactly. that business, right? So think of the output of your company, think of the profit, think of the competition, before you think of actually, oh, I've, I've got 100 people, I'll just take the you know first 25 that applied. Um, because it could be that the second 75, uh, you know, that's where the diversity lies. So. Very, very interesting. What do you think is going to be the biggest, the biggest challenge for you over the next? Just two more questions, I promise. Hmm. Biggest challenge for you as Arctic Shores over the next sort of twelve months, um, and then the, the the last question is like, what advice would you give to recruiters hmm. to kind of get through this this period? Hmm. So the first question, I think, the biggest challenge for Arctic Shores is really getting people to change their mindset and think that there is an alternative yeah. to using the CV. 
Because when people realise that there is an alternative and that you can focus on potential and the benefits it will bring, it is a bit like an epiphany. It is like John from Siemens was saying, it's like somebody lifting off the hood. Yeah. But actually getting out there and trying to get time with talent acquisition to explain to them that actually they could do their job better, they could make an even greater contribution to their organisations. It's incredibly hard because they're, mm. they're inundated with... Um, requests from people with silver bullets and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. So that's the biggest challenge for Archie Shores is just how do we get this message out there and build momentum around Scrap the CV. Yeah. The second question in terms of what's my advice to TA and it would be a simple one which is don't stop experimenting. Don't let the fact that we're going into a more difficult economic environment and that you're being given less uh, budget than you had last year mean that you can't experiment and get out of the complacency with which you've been doing this that you can pilot something yeah. and it is it's easier than you think and if you work with the right people you can achieve that because the biggest danger is we go into uh, these times and then people stop trying to think of better ways to make recruitment yeah. fairer and more effective yeah good advice I think I would I would add to that in if you're in TA and you're thinking about psychometrics you you need to I think you need to educate yourself on the stories that mm. you talked about like mm. with Siemens and the benefit that it then led to in the business mm. Much like in video world, you know, so we worked with the NHS and they found that a third of the people that they hired would have been rejected based on their paper-based application, yes. which is huge, mm -hmm. you know, and they basically, it, it took a third of the time to hire the same number of people um, because they opened the doors to all this potential. So if you want to save time, if you want to give, you know, hiring managers great transparency of what talent is, I also love the fact that with your... Um, with your software and, and you know everything that comes with it you really are identifying somebody's potential to do that job yes as opposed to you know just the video side of things if you work the two in, in tandem I think it works very nicely because you get this person has genuine potential yes to fulfill this role therefore hiring manager they're not going to be as hard to train as you think exactly and also, here's a video proving that they fit our culture, you know, that they can eloquently articulate themselves, da da da, and just challenge, you know, any bias that they still have because they want to see a CV, etc. And those two things together, the actual ability to do the job, therefore easy to train, plus here's the actual person in a consistent, you know, way that really showcases and gives them a voice. Like those two things together can be quite powerful. It's got to be the right way we should be recruiting in the 21st century. Yeah. Well, I guess that's it. Thank you so much for uh, joining the podcast. Uh, if people do want to get in touch with you or anybody in the team, what's the best way? It's Robert at ArcticShills.com. There you go. It's out there. It is. Get ready for the uh, <laughs> sales <laughs> calls. I'm getting so many at the moment through LinkedIn. It's crazy. But it's been a pleasure having you on. Thank you so much. And yeah, I'm sure we'll meet again soon. Likewise, buddy. Thank you. Thank you.